Hello, welcome back to Simon's Rants. I'm Simon, and today I'm giving my second thought on Kill Bill Volumes 1 and 2. I'm combining both into one review because, in essence, it's just one movie that's been split. So, this is your spoiler warning. If you haven't seen either yet, you should go watch them, come back, and we can talk about it then. So, this is the fourth film by Quentin Tarantino. He wrote and directed it, and it's starring Uma Thurman. So, if you don't know what this movie is about, it follows Uma Thurman's character, who's the bride, who is at a wedding rehearsal when she's attacked by Bill, who's an ex-lover. Her whole wedding party gets murdered, and she gets shot in the head, but survives and goes into a four-year coma. She then comes out of the coma and then goes on a mad, bloody killing spree to kill Bill. Pretty standard revenge story on the surface, but as in any good revenge story, there has to be some things that make it a little more interesting. So in this one, Quentin Tarantino is paying homage to the traditional martial arts movies, spaghetti westerns, and grindhouse movies. So I'm going to warn you guys straight up. I don't like this movie. I really don't. And I understand what it's going for, but just because it's paying homage to something doesn't mean, first off, that the thing it's paying homage to is good, or just because it's an accurate portrayal of that thing, that it is therefore good as well. Now, I know martial arts movies are very popular for their over-the-top action styles, but I've never found them interesting. I always found them silly and cheesy with bad acting, bad dialogue, and especially horrible fighting. I know it's not supposed to be taken literally or seriously, but martial arts in real life are silly to me. I've taken some fencing lessons throughout the years, so I know the basics of sword fighting, and I can tell you that martial arts is silly. It's very showy, it's not very practical at all. So then you take the martial arts that are already silly and you put them into a movie which makes them even sillier, where people are running up walls and flying in air and all these stupid silly things, and I don't find that entertaining. I cringe at most sword fights in movies, but especially those kind of sword fights. Now you take that idea and you have Quentin Tarantino add his over-the-top style to it, and I get it. He's paying homage to it, but it's something I already don't like, and just because it's a popular thing doesn't mean it's good. So I get what he's going for, but if he was paying homage to it simply because he thought it was actually good, I disagree. And if he was parodying it, it's too subtle to be funny, so it's just stuck somewhere in the middle. Now, that is a critique more for the first part, as the second part actually does get even more ridiculous, so it actually starts to get funny again. It's not great, but I can enjoy it as a parody a little bit, because just certain characters are so over the top that you've got this old ancient kung fu master or whatever and he's hilarious i don't know if he's supposed to be but he is hilarious everything he does is such a caricature it's ridiculously funny to me but in part one nothing goes uh, over the top enough to be funny it's just over the top enough to be ridiculous and silly so i have trouble being entertained by this because quentin tarantino is known for two basic things his great dialogue writing, and his over-the-top violence. Now, the over-the-top violence is very stylistic, and in this one, he goes over the top of what he normally does because he's added in this kung fu martial arts style to it. So you've got people cutting off people's heads with katanas and cutting them in half, which isn't possible, but it's that's the whole point, is it's so overdone and so overdramatic. So it's not only Tarantino style, it's Tarantino on steroids, essentially. But then you go to what makes his movies so entertaining to me, which is the characters and the dialogue, and you've got none of that because he's paying homage to these things that are known for having bad dialogue and bad acting in spaghetti westerns, grindhouse, and martial arts movies. All of those three movies always have clunky, horrible dialogue and usually pretty bad acting as well. And this movie has both of those in it. The dialogue is not traditional Tarantino dialogue at all. It's very bad, it's very boring, and very restrictive, and then the acting overall isn't great either. I don't think Uma Thurman's a good actress, but even if she was, she probably couldn't handle this dialogue very well at all because it's so bad. And I'm not saying that Tarantino is a bad writer, he's the opposite. He's a great writer, and he was purposefully writing like this to pay homage to this style of movie making, but as I've just laid out, this style of movie making is bad to begin with, so him copying something to honor it 
doesn't fly with me. And I get why he was doing it, and I can respect that decision, and I can understand why he's doing that, but I wholeheartedly disagree with people who defend this movie saying it's good because it's copying a style of a different movie that is bad. It's not good. Well made, but bad. And yeah, it is extremely well made. It's extremely technical. It's practically technically perfect with all the camera angles, all the different special effects, everything that he's able to accomplish from an artistic point. Amazing, flawless. So I'll give you five out of 10 stars because you did that half of the movie great. But as for interesting dialogue, interesting characters, interesting story, realistic fight sequences, all you get a zero for that. So I'm giving it as a whole a five out of 10. I do not enjoy it at all. I could not get into it. It's so bad. And I could enjoy it if the fights were so over the top that they were enjoyable, but they're not. They're so boring. They're so slow and deliberate that I don't care if you're floating in midair, kicking somebody in the face three times and then land. It's, it's so slow and boring that I can't have fun with it. Like you've got this scenario where you've got like 88 or so bodyguards all attacking Uma Thurman. That sounds like it should be great, right? Well, it's not because they each take turns and attack her in groups of two to four. It's boring. And meanwhile, the rest of them are just standing in the background like, oh, I can't wait to hit her. I can't wait to hit her. And they're not doing anything. And it's just mind numbingly stupid. And like, I get that it's going for this style, but like the style is stupid. So good job, Tarantino. You did a perfect mimic of this style because it's not funny mockery of it and it's not hinting at it. It is it. This is a typical martial arts movie and you copied it and pasted it perfectly, but that doesn't mean it's good. You did it completely perfectly. Here's an example. Say you had the greatest, most talented artist of all time, and he decided with his great ability to exactly portray and exactly copy a political cartoonist's cartoon. The political cartoon and its artwork still sucks, even though the guy who was copying it copied it perfectly, like stroke for stroke, dot for dot. Everything is perfect about the copy, but the original artwork that he was copying still sucked. So yeah, you did great at what you were doing, but you were mimicking and copying and paying homage to something that wasn't good to begin with. So I'm not saying Tarantino is a bad director or bad writer. I know the exact opposite is true. He's a fantastic director. He's a fantastic writer. I've spent the majority of this series so far and will for the majority of the series after this talking about Tarantino movies, talk about how great he is. But Kill Bill to me is my least favorite thing he's done that I've seen period, bar none. That's including all of them. I haven't reviewed uh, Death Proof yet, but I'll get to that. And I've already reviewed Jackie Brown and including everything he's done, Kill Bill is easily my least favorite thing he's done. Easily, because it's so boring. The only part of the movie, the only part of the two movies that I started to remotely enjoy was there's a scene where Uma Thurman finally tracks down Bill and then meets up with him and he's playing with their daughter. That scene hit home a little bit. That scene was emotional. That scene was powerful. And then that's it. That's the only good scene. You go to truth serum inventions and other cheesy stuff. And that was why part two, for me, if I was splitting them up into uh, part one, part two, I'd give part one four out of 10 and part two is six out of 10, because I thought part two was a little bit better because it was goofier in ridiculous ways and it had that one good scene. But in part two, you've got ridiculous, goofy stuff. Like you've got Bill inventing a truth serum, which is just like James Bond bullshit. And then you've got um, people plucking people's eyes out like that. And you've got this old ancient Kung Fu master, which like I already said, he's hilarious because he's so over the top and ridiculous. So in the part two, it almost started to become evident that this was tongue in cheek and a joke, but in part one, it never appears that way. So in part one, it's just bland and boring and dull. And part two, you kind of start to see the joke, but it doesn't quite go far enough to be the joke. If you were trying to be funny and if you were trying to be a parody, which I'm not sure if they were or not, it was far too subtle and only started to show itself in part two, whereas part one seemed to be taking itself seriously for its own detriment. And there was many parts about this that I wanted to like, 
Like, I thought the whole thing with Lucy Liu was going to be really cool because I'd seen clips of that whole part before where you've got them walking around that restaurant and you've got the camera going through the, the walls and stuff and they're moving people out of the way and walls out of the way and lifting up parts of the set and down. And that was all really cool and really done masterfully. Unfortunately, the movie surrounding it was boring and bland and just a horrible kung fu movie. I'm sorry, it just wasn't good. And on top of that, most of the stylistic choices are great, but not all of them. So for instance, in this fight where she's fighting all of these 88 people, it cuts to black and white at a certain point. And it's done in a way to try to make you think that it's done for an artistic reason, but realistically, you know it's done because there was no way they could get this much blood into an R-rated movie. It would have been given an X rating and nobody wants that. So you cut to black and white, fine, whatever. There's been several moments of black and white in this movie so far, it almost blends in. However, they do it so sloppily that it stands out like a sore thumb, especially when it cuts back from the black and white into color. They have it cut from black and white to color just to have it go to in the dark silhouettes in like less than a minute because you've got these black silhouettes fighting in front of a blue screen that's the first color you should have brought in and so then when the lights come on and the color comes in you won't have even noticed until later that wait when did the color come back i didn't realize i didn't remember the color coming back when was that that's how you should have done it that would have been creative that would have been cool i've seen a few other movies where they did something like that in this it's just jarring and pointless and looks sloppy yeah i know that's a nitpick but there's so few good things in this movie to work with the only good thing like i said is the technicality of it so if you're going to have flaws in the technicality they're worth nitpicking because that's the one thing you've got going for you because the acting is awful the writing is awful the action is entertaining i'm sure to a certain demographic but if you don't like these kind of kung fu martial arts movies that are ridiculous and stupid then the movie's ridiculous and stupid i don't care if you're paying homage to them or not you're paying homage to something ridiculous and stupid i'm sorry <laughs> I can't come up with a better analogy than the artist redoing the cartoonist's work. That's the best analogy you can come up with because I am not saying that Tarantino is a bad artist. He is phenomenal at what he does. But for some reason, there was this uh, bad point in his career, starting with Jackie Brown and ending with Death Proof, where he just, instead of making original works, was trying to mimic other people's styles. And Jackie Brown, he did, like I said, that Scorsese type thing. And this one, he's doing this grindhouse, spaghetti western, um, martial arts thing. And then in Death Proof, he's doing a straight, like, grindhouse horror movie thing. And they all work to varying levels of success, but it's like, when he's just legitimately making his own unique original works, that's when Tarantino's easily at his best. These four movies that came out in the middle are all disappointments in some way. I enjoyed them to varying levels, but they're nowhere. They're his four worst movies. Straight up, they are. He should have spent more time making these other movies, especially since he's limiting himself to making only 10 movies. He wasted three movies on making homages to things that aren't as good as what he was making, which is a shame. The fact that it was made into two movies was primarily because it was too long to be made into one movie. Tarantino wanted to release it as one movie, but the studio said it's too long, we can't do that, cut it up into two movies and release them a year apart. And so he did, and he didn't bother editing it down anymore. Here's the thing. I feel like you could have taken these two movies and edited it down into two hours. There's so much dead air, it's so boring, there's so much, I know, I get it, like, slow burn is not an issue for me. I legitimately enjoy movies that are slow build, but for this kind of movie, you didn't need to do as much as they did, and you could have easily, easily have edited this down to a two, a two and a half hour movie, no problem. It's just silly that they didn't. It's presented like it's some sort of epic when it's not, it's just the silly, martial arts movie. Nothing about this movie is special in any way. It's just mimicking what other martial arts movies done. So whether or not you like those or not, it's nothing special because it's not an original work. It's paying homage to an original work. Whether that original work is great or not, this thing paying homage to it is not the great thing. This thing debatably is, and I don't even think that is true. So no, Kill Bill 1 or 2, they're not good. They're not great in any way. 
Are they watchable? I think it depends on if you like martial arts or not. I gave it a five because I don't like martial arts. But if you like martial arts, I could understand why somebody would give it a seven. But even that's not great. It's, it's not a work of art at all. It's really not. But you know what? At least Tarantino's made great movies other than that. You know what? He is a great filmmaker, and this is not something we have to judge him by. Even if his foot fetish was on full display in this, and it's painful and awkward and... Ugh. <laughs> There's so much. So many feet in this. Speaking of feet, that was a horrible, horrible moment in this movie where... Okay, so she's been in the coma for four years, right? And she wakes up, but she can't use her legs. But she can use her arms fine, by the way. And she beats the crap out of these two people, which are like straight out of a Stephen King book. Because you've got this guy, he's got this religious cross necklace, but he's the one, he's getting, he's getting paid by people to let them rape her. It's like, of course the religious guy. It's so, ugh, it's such a Weinstein thing. And I, I, hate, I hate it so much. It's so gross. Ugh. Weinstein had his fingerprints all over this movie, and it was so evident. I just, this movie... <sighs> It grossed me out when it wasn't supposed to, and it didn't entertain me when it was supposed to. I just, it's, overall, it was just a disappointment to me in every way. If you were doing it just, like, just a little bit more ridiculous, I would have laughed with you. But because it took itself just a little too seriously, then I'm like, you're just being like every other martial arts, kung fu, karate movie. I'm not into it, so... Yeah, that's what I thought. That was my long-winded explanation, trust me. I had many more notes that I could have talked about, but... I want to try to keep these 10 minutes, and I already failed, so... Thanks for watching, guys. Please let me know in the comments below what you guys thought. Also, please like and share, and if you're new here, subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye!